Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are gonna make a loaded envelope. Uh, this is actually a project I'm doing for a friendly junction of people. It's a Facebook group for us who like junk journals. And we have a project now in December to make uh, junk journal related tutorials and I am making a loaded envelope as one of them. I'm actually making this for a person uh, who likes vintage and nature. So I have chosen Tim Hall's paper. Uh, I prefer or I recommend using double-sided scrapbook paper because both of the sides are going to show. Let me just quickly show to get an idea one of the envelopes I have made previously. I'm gonna make a little bit different uh, top part than it is here but this is the idea. I make the loaded envelopes I make with large pockets so that you can fit as much stuff as possible. So I'm gonna show you how to make a double pocket, one in the front, one in the back and how to get a lot of stuff inside it because that's the purpose right if you're wondering what's going on with my fingers <laughs> I, I cut my uh, I cut the little flesh between the fingers it was disgusting and now when it's healing I'm just stopping myself from opening the opening the fingers all the time it looks a little bit funny but works just fine. I have apparently lost my scissors so now we just have to have to make it work with this uh, huge kitchen scissors. Okay shall we start? So this is going to be the uh, outer side and this is going to be the inside of the envelope. How I start, I take my scoreboard. You can do this without two. You can score without scoring board two. This is good to have. So, here is the uh, inches, here is centimeters, but we go with inches now, although I'm not so good with it. But this is 12 inches wide paper, so I place it on zero, and I want to score. Like that. Then we repeat on the other side with when you use three and a quarter as a measure. We are going to we are gonna be left with quite quite much overlapping uh, in the middle but it doesn't matter because we are actually gonna use all that excess length or width when we form the pockets now this is the front side then this is going to be the back side now you can actually choose how much you want the pocket to be high 
I prefer about one third of the whole height of the paper so that would be about four inches but it's really not so uh, important I make it about that because this time I make it a little bit less because this time I'm gonna make the the uh, top a little bit different so I need just a bit space there too then we have folds here and I folded about this much maybe score this one too you get less distress for for the paper if you score the line so this is three and a half inches what I'm gonna score now like this but because we want the pocket on the back too I want to so I have fold here I mark it with the pen pencil just to see the line I don't want to I don't want to cut all the way to the fold I want to cut just a uh, just tiny bit above maybe half inch above the fold as you see the fold is there fold is here And of course I'm not gonna cut all the way I'm gonna cut into this fold we made the other way and when you choose a paper it's you would think that the stronger or the sturdier paper the better but it's not because we need a little bit flexibility so this Tim Holtz paper is about the heaviest I like to use it doesn't have to be this heavy either so we will warm now we have the front side we have the fold we made and when I cut these above the folds I'm able to turn it back here forming a pocket also to the back but this why I cut above the fold I wanted to make these flaps we use to glue the pocket so I cut the corners off so they are not visible and this one has to has to be opened from the side otherwise it doesn't work so here on the inside you need to take this corner off like that now we have the flaps the next I'm gonna do still when the envelope is open I'm gonna cut the top part the top of the envelope I'm planning on cutting it to the form of a tag if it makes any sense so I take the two inches from the middle 
I'm not really sure how to do this. I haven't done this before like this. So this is actually just drying <laughs> drying out. I'm thinking here's the two inches in the middle. I'm thinking to cut this corner off. Then cut a little bit down and then about there. But I think it's gonna be enough with two inches from the top. This one is coming. So I think I just take a straight line. Okay, I think we cut and we see, we notice if it doesn't work. It should be the worst idea, but uh, I don't know if you don't try. Yes, so I'm planning having a hole here with eyelet and having a ribbon. Then I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some distressing. This part here I'm gonna roll, so I'm gonna distress also the inside from this part. Before I'm gonna close this, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna make these colors and I'm gonna attach it with a thread most likely so I do that before I close the envelope it's much easier so you need something to help rolling the paper it's, it could be a little bit bigger than this or thicker but I don't seem to have anything now. The issue was when I last time was I had to ship the loaded envelope to the other side of the world. So I stuffed this collar is full of uh, cotton. But I think it helped keeping it uh, formed. And what I like to do, I like to take some ugly washi tape. I'm sorry, something washi tape that is not your favorite. I want to uh, make the part where the bread is coming, I want to make it a bit stronger. So I place a piece of tape on the back side. Now I just, I think we go with, with the hard ones. I have this um, 
my drawer. I can show you a bit. It's it's full of small boxes. It's like muffin or cupcake boxes. <laughs> it's not very or it's a large drawer. It's things I use often. What I want to have available, easily available. Okay, so then I need something to make a hole with. Like this. I know what you call it, but I don't know how to say it. I'm gonna make a hole right about the middle of the corner. Same on this side. And then we know where to put the piece of tape. Of course, we don't want it to show on the outside. So it can't be too big. gonna do the same thing on the inside of the envelope about the place where the bread is gonna go through I'm gonna also put some tape here. But this is completely optional. Like this. Okay. And now it's just to decide which side is going to be on top. I want the ticket to be on top. And then I just punch it through. Or I mark it lightly first. And then I can add the tape here and then I already attached these spreads because it's much more challenging when you have glued everything together. Then I just a little bit form the uh, colors. And you see now I'm probably again gonna stuff the inside with cotton or something just to hold it together. And since I have rolled it quite much, There's quite much distress coming to this part. That's why I put the tape. And here, if you want, you can cover the bread with tape again so that 
the papers you're, you're gonna put in afterwards they don't get stuck And these things would be so annoying to start doing afterwards, after you have glued everything together. Okay, I think we start. I use white glue now. You can use tacky glue. I would maybe use this universal, this like E6000 glue just because this dries really fast but I am I actually need this little amount what I have here I need it to another project before I get new one so I'm not gonna use that this one is good glue but it takes a little bit more time to glue or to attach but I'm not gonna put it so high because we have the color I think even now we might have no it's a, quite okay so now it's just to wait that it dries just put paper clip to hold it for a minute what I'm noticing now this is due to the fact that I made the upper part like this I lost quite much the height so I see how high this pocket is now gonna come so I'm gonna cut this is quite high pocket anyway so I'm gonna cut probably one inch off while waiting the glue to dry I would like to leave it high from the back though so I'm thinking if I would actually make it like this but this is this is all just uh, this is completely possible to make as it is i would just have to press this a little bit more together from or in from here Okay, this is not going to be easy but I'm gonna try if I don't get it symmetrical then I'm not gonna do it then I'm because I try if it doesn't look good I just continue with the straight line so it's not that big of a deal <laughs> the famous one of the famous last words I'm quite perfectionist on some things, so if I don't manage to get it, and symmetria is something, or asymmetria is something that is really, really bothering me on some things. If things don't fit together, I think it's good. After I have distressed it, and what I do, if I have something not so perfect, like sandpaper is my new best friend. I have also really good quality laser printer. So I have a laser printer with re it makes really good quality or high quality pictures. And when I make vintage style journal, I want them to be more vintage, so then I sandpaper them. I 
again I I like to enforce the folds that's something I often often do when I make book page envelopes or especially if I'm using like an old book page uh, which is quite fragile or a thin all right then I distress the edge again I like quite heavily distressed look I wonder if this is dry already. Yes. Okay, then what we need to do now to make the pockets as large as possible. I take my scoring board again. Okay, now I taped it a little bit too soon. One is is it one eighth of an inch then okay if I read this right now one score is one eighth of an inch right and that would be in millimeters about three millimeters if I remember right so I'm going to score, I'm going to place this one, so the score is in its place, and then I'm going to score one to the outside. So I'm forming like a white fold. We can actually make one more one more fold here. I checked we have I checked and we have enough width. So so I have three folds here side by side. And tape enforcing the folds. I hope you can see it now. You see the three scores. So it's just forming like this big round fold. Now you see how much the last fold is gonna come over. It's it's about half of an inch. We will have space on the outside and on both sides. It looks funny now, but you see it in the end. And you see now how little we have to go. So here you need a, a good glue. Uh, now I apply glue on the outside of these flaps. And the one what I want to say on the outside, which is this left left side, I'm gonna apply glue here. Not so wide because 
as I showed, we don't have so much to go. So turn the flaps inside, make sure the other flap comes around the other one or on top, not like this. But they, the left side comes around the right side, and then I glue them. And on the middle, making sure I, making sure that the flaps are in line with the bottom of the envelope, but also dragging it a little bit out or, or uh, to the side so I have maybe half of an inch in the middle when the glue has dried up enough to hold but not completely you make sure that you haven't glued anything on the inside, open it if you have, and let it dry. You don't see it quite well when we made the three folds here, or the scores. You don't see it how much you have the excess paper on the both sides but it has a huge impact on how much space you have on inside the pockets. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up this project. I'm gonna fill it up with all kind of uh, lovely stuff and I'm gonna come back and show you what I have done and fast forward you to the point where you see the end result. Okay, thanks. Uh, until then, bye bye. Okay, I'm back with the ready loaded envelope. I'm finished with all the ephemera and embellishments. We had uh, instructions to make 15 embellishments and 10 ephemera, totaling a uh, minimum of 25 uh, pieces. And I might I might have uh, mentioned that my partner or the person who is going to receive this has favorite themes, uh, books, hymnal books or pages and vintage and nature. So I used a little bit uh, all of those and this is what I ended up having. So I tried to use quite muted and uh, or colors what fits with vintage theme. And as you see now, how important it was to me was for me to uh, make the bigger pockets because I have these colors what takes quite much space and. Uh, so that I can fit as much as possible here. I have a lot of stuff inside. I'm probably gonna, I'm going to include some papers and some uh, book pages and uh, different kind of papers still inside the package, but I'm not gonna stuff it inside this envelope. So I just quickly go through everything that I have put in. So you see how much there really is stuff. So 
So embellishments uh, are pieces what I have decorated somehow. So it's not plain paper piece anymore. I have embellished and decorated them different ways. Ephemera is then different kind of plain paper collectibles. This is coffee dyed. These are authentic vintage tickets. These are uh, thought as embellishments because it's not plain anymore. There is stamping on top. Same here. These I make to, from all kind of paper scraps. When I cut pages to my junk journals, I get this small piece. Then I just fold it, punch uh, circle, and use it as a small note paper. These I like to, like to glue on the journal page, especially on the first page. It looks nice. This is kind of a journaling card. So everything follows the same muted vintage color theme. This is just plain card with a small tag. And these, I when I use this myself, I just add some small, if I'm doing a nature journal, I might add something small here to uh, fit it to nature theme. Here's the same kind of notepaper pocket or what do you call it. These are my uh, Christmas gift tags in packs of five. So I have stamped them in the front and on the back it says uh, it's like uh, you can have it with when you give a gift to someone. And because it has a picture of Rose, I think it fits here too. This is old vintage uh, measuring paper. And this one I have attached only from few places with double-sided tape so that she can take it off and use it how she wants. So I tear small pieces and add it, uh, use it in my embellishments. I might, for example, add one here, small piece. And bigger pockets. This is a nice idea I got from a YouTube channel, Bonnie and Clive. How she uses small, smallest uh, pieces of scrap paper. Or the scraps of the paper she uses. So this follows the same idea. Embellished tag. Printable I have just embellished. This is a decoupage tag with the button and sari silk. And I have some Edith Holden pages here. Some other nature pages. These are old hymnal uh, book pages. All these here. These are Scandinavian though, but I hope she likes the notes anyway. Then I have some old cards, received newspaper page. On the back, I'm giving one of Tim Hall's stamps. It really doesn't have so much to do with the theme other than it's a vintage goes with vintage style i'm giving a little bit sari silk here on the back i have just put some plain uh, paper pieces 
so I have included more like supplies because I know those are the most easy to use on her own projects than to start using the ready made embellishments. Here is some smaller pieces, vintage style. And as I mentioned, I include some papers and napkins and uh, book pages and things like that. I'm not going to show them here and waste your time. But, uh, and here is the plain envelope. I added also a hole with eyelet, eyelet and a sari silk ribbon. Okay, I'm going to fill it up and pack it and get it to mail. Uh, I suggest, actually I noticed now when I filled it all the way to max, it's quite good to use some tape inside just to secure these folds so they don't rip. I also added to the outside, I added Tim Hall's washi tape. Because it's kind of it's uh, it look, looks good on the outside too. Okay, I hope you got a point of uh, loaded envelopes. Thanks for watching. Bye.